guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today I'm going to make a junk journal from scratch simply because I met someone out in my travels while I was shopping and um, really had a conversation with her about what junk journaling was. We were at the Dollar Tree shopping for some really pretty... Um, this is some new product that the Dollar Tree carries. It's like contact paper, but more so wallpaper and this is what it looks like on the back so it's made by main street wall creations and it's in their oversized large um, sticker section not in the crafting sticker section and it's basically uh, a wallpaper that you can use either on your wall up your stairs on the uh, the landings and or behind a bookshelf which I've actually done this with some other contact paper before so yeah I mean this is just a new product that Dollar Tree is carrying and it's in such beautiful um, images so I mean look at that that's gorgeous and look at that that's dying to be a book cover so anyway while I was talking to her I had to um, she asked what am I going to use those for so I started to talk about junk journaling because that's what we love. We love talking about junk journaling. So, um, yeah, I explained to her what I'm using them for and I decided to do a video just for um, those of you out there who do not know what a junk journal is or how we use our junk journals or if you're new to my channel or any of our channels, um, you know, you're probably wondering, what is this ephemera? What is that? <laughs> you know? So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and get started and I'll be right back. Okay, so for this demonstration, I have to bring in the big boy, my large guillotine here, and I'm going to do this the long way, okay, so that there's no shortcuts. I'm not using a box of, you know, to make the book cover or anything like that. I'm just going to show you the long way, but it may also be the easier way. So all I've done was just mark my, this is just chipboard, by the way. This is a backing of any paper pack that you may have it's a 12 by 12 sheet if you have a paper pack just remove the back cover okay this is just chipboard that I'm using here or um, like really thick um, cardstock basically so it's just the backing of a of a book that I had 12 by 12 I'm gonna line this up and cut it at 9 inches and then I'm going to cut it down at six inches. Where's my six inch mark, which is over here. Now let me rotate this. Okay, there's six inches. All right, I'm going to make a standard nine by six book. Okay, that's, that's usually the norm if you have uh, a junk journal. Sometimes if you're using uh, 11 and a half, by eight paper was it 11 no eight and a half by 11 paper um nine by six will house standard eight and a half by 11 paper once you fold it in half okay so that's all this is in here some of it's coffee dyed tea dyed this is just the pre-made uh signatures that i had on hand i just folded a bunch of paper and eight and a half by 11 folded in half a nine by six book cover will house that size paper all right as you can see here okay without doing too much cutting or fitting or anything like that so yeah I just cut down one um, chipboard 12 by 12 cut it down and now I have two covers a front and a back okay and then I also have this leftover so I can make my spine all right, move this aside and this is when you really want to think about like how chunky do you want your journal to be how big of a spine do you think you need I'm going for just a regular spine one and a half inches so I'm just gonna line this up right here to one and a half I believe my two signatures should fit in there comfortably so here we go one and a half inch spine this right here measures also 
one and a half inches maybe yeah so yeah it's a little bit bigger than one and a half but I'll go with the actual one and a half inch spine okay so I need to cut this down to nine inches I'm just going to place this on the nine and cut just want to make sure yep it's right on the nine okay perfect now I can move my guillotine out of the way and get to reinforcing this book so this is what we have right here okay um, I'm going to tape up my two sides to my spine with um, the tapes that I have here so I have this which is book binding tape if you can't find book binding tape this is just Gorilla Tape. It's almost made of the same materials. It's a polyester fabric-y type of tape um, that's good for binding books, basically. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. It's like a kind of like a very rough material. So is this. This is book binding tape. Same thing. Sort of a polyester type of, I don't know, type of tape. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I am just going to line this up on my mat. Um, let's go with here at the five. And I just want to put like an eighth of an inch gap in between the front cover, the spine, and then an eighth of an inch between the spine and the back cover. So it will look like this. Okay, and at this point, I am probably going to do one side first and then work on the other side just so that you know everything works out <laughs> really well. All right, so and the reason why you need like an eighth of an inch space in between is so that you can bend and fold the book open and close without any um, uh, stress on the book itself. So, again, I'm just lining this up right on the line right where I need it to go and I'm going to use my book binding tape to tape that down I'm going to cut it a little long and then wrap it around the front I'm going to do the same thing for the back side or the front depending on which one you've decided to be your front or your back cover And you can see this is how you want your your book to be very flexible open and close without any hindrance so I'm just going to remove this flip it over pull my tape closed on the opposite side And then I'm going to put another piece of tape on this side to fill in that gap. And now we have our book. All right, with a one and a half inch spine all right so that's all that is now to reinforce the spine because there will be some stress on it this is when I'm going to use my Gorilla Tape when you um, stitch in your signatures into the book there'll be a lot of stress on the spine so I'm gonna use my Gorilla Tape if I can get it to unravel it's been a while since I've actually done a journal from scratch so here we go. Lay 
lately I've been making just a lot of ephemera. I have so much fun making the items that goes into a junk journal. I haven't really spent that much time making a junk journal, at least not from scratch. Now I am going to finish the monochrome journal that I've started. I have not forgotten about that. I will finish that book. And it's really almost finished. Like all I have to do is just stitch in the signatures and do some decorating. But I'm telling you, when I met this lady today, she was just so in awe of a junk journal. She's like, I don't understand. Like, what do you do with it? <laughs> so yeah, I had to explain to her, like, you know, the simplest form of junk journaling. So, and do it quickly because, you know, nobody really wants to hear a 30-minute dissertation on, on crafting. <laughs> so here we go. My spine is somewhat reinforced, but again, I'm, I'm over the top when it comes to reinforcing my spines. And it has a little bit of tape residue on one side right here, so I'm just going to use my rubber to erase that. And again, this is another item from Dollar Tree that I cannot live without. If you ever see these, pick them up because they're super handy. And I want to make sure that I'm covering up my white tape as well. I'm going to bring over my excess black from the other side. And I'm going to line this tape up pretty well with the previous. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this off right here. And then I'll put one more just to cover up this other white tape right here. And that's it. Like, that's pretty secure at that point. I'm thinking this spine is not going anywhere once I uh, get this other piece of tape on here. So I'm just slightly going over where the white tape ended, which is right about here. And anywhere you see some tape residue, just go over it with that rubber. I, um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day. So, oh goodness, this tape is something else <laughs> if you're gonna tie anything up use this tape for sure because it is really something All right. okay so I'm just gonna remove a little bit more residue that's on the back here and that's it okay so now I'm feeling really comfortable about this this spine right here it is solid. The spine is more solid than the book cover right now. So I'm loving it. That's great. Because the book cover is going to get covered up. It's also going to have, um, you know, decorations, pockets in it. So it will get reinforced on its own down the road. But right now, the spine is life. It is 100% in place. All right. Yep, for sure. Okay, so that's all we did so far. Covered up our spine or created the spine with the book cover. And now we're going to cover up the book. And I'm going to use this fantastic. This, this, this pattern is like, well, it is life. Like, I love it. It's so, 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 so pretty. So... This paper right here is easy to um, manipulate. It has a 
peel and crack section, you just uh, bend this section over right here and you peel off the, the tape. All right, so that gets you your first um, easy to line up portion. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to place this down anywhere here on this um, on this paper. But there is an up and a down for me. There is. I mean, I'm looking at this as these swirls are facing up. But right now I fl I flip the paper over in order to get that top section. So regardless of what, I'm going to have to flip the book over again. Um to represent my top or my bottom so I'll just show you what I'm talking about in just a second and I'm just going to stick that down right there and I'm just using the adhesive that this wallpaper has provided if it's strong enough to go up on your walls I'm almost positive it can hold this book together so let's give it a go and see what we get all right, so let's see what we got. I'm going to flip it over and take a look not too shabby I think <laughs> that looks great all right so two things one we can do the bulky corners or we can cut this on an angle and get rid of those bulky corners which I think I'm gonna do um I can do the you know the 45 degree angle which is like this but the corners will be bulky once you flip over your two sides okay but right now I think I'm just going to cut away that much of it and work with that. And I can even cut away some more. And this is, I mean, this is pretty sturdy uh, paper. Like, it's not very, um, you know, you would expect it to be like flimsy or like contact papery. It's really not. It's pretty sturdy. It's wallpaper, so it will tear. But, um, yeah, it's, I like it so far. Alright, so now we have that and then you just, uh, for this I will get maybe a little bit of our, um, Scotch Create glue just for the inside right here. Okay. And I'm going to pull that as tight as possible. And I will do the same up here at the top. Oh, too much. And I'm just using the edge of the book to get that first crease to train the paper to fold over. and now we're going to do this one again just a very light smear of our <laughs> glitter glue I mean uh, scotch create glue just a little smear All 
right and I can see that my corners right here will be a little bulky so I'm just going to snip away a little excess here and a little excess there and then do the same thing again with the scotch create just a light a light passing of it over the book itself and I'm going to fold up my edges to come through here I'm going to give the glue a minute or two to grab. I just want to show you what the outside of the book looks like. Alright, so that's pretty, pretty much the best looking book I've seen in a while. And once the glue dries, then I'll come through and close it again. And um, yeah, I just want the glue to... Um, on the adhesive on the uh, the wallpaper itself to set so I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back all right so here is the artisan paper that I um, cut up to fit inside the journal so this is what the outside of the journal looks like I think I showed that to you before I left I had to move my blue mat just so I can get the measurements right um, I used my gray mat to uh, measure this up. So what I've done so far was just cut out the inside and outside cover from that artisan paper. And then I will overlay this on top um, here in the center if necessary. I may or may not need it. But for aesthetics purposes, I think it should uh, get placed in here. So we'll just see how this goes. Okay. So right now, all I'm going to do right now is um, glue this down. All right, so my paper is holding up really well on the outside and yeah so the only thing that I've done since I left you guys was um, I heated this up with my heat tool and um, just to get the the um, adhesive on the inside of the um, contact paper or wallpaper to stick to the cardboard on the inside okay so yeah, I just ran my heat tool over it a couple of times and um, yeah, everything is nice and stuck down. Oh, and the other thing was I had a little bit of bulk here in the corners, top and bottom. So I just cut a little V, a little triangle out here and um, tightened everything up and then did the same thing here at the top. It's just for um, bulk purposes again, um, aesthetics so that you know it's not bun bunching up right here in the middle so let me figure out what side is which and um, you know what's right side up here always want to double check your orientation of your your work simply because it's so easy to get things turned upside down inside out and whatnot and you know you don't want to stick your um, <laughs> you don't want to stick your paper down upside down after you spent all this time you just always want to make sure your orientation is going in the in the right direction so I am going to attempt to use um, scotch create glue it's a permanent adhesive and it dries clear while well, it goes on clear as well but um, yeah it's one of my favorite glues and I'm just going to place this all over the inside of the book on the front cover right now I'm working on the front side of the book and um, yeah let's just see how this goes <laughs> I'm always experimenting and um, you know always hoping for the best but have my fingers crossed behind my back just in case you know so this is facing up and I'm just going to place it down right here on this front cover and then slide it into place.
All right, that's looking pretty good. And the book can still open and close, no problem. So, we'll do the same thing for the back cover. I'm going to get a good bit of glue on here because I don't want anything lifting or coming undone. And I'm going to get it all the way to the ends and the edges. Alright, so let's do this side. And my cover can open and close very nicely I was thinking about doing one full sheet all the way across and you know having second thoughts about that always because you just don't want to create a problem for your book down the road so it was my best judgment to cut it here in the middle and this is looking pretty neat so far I think this is going to be a very nice, very um, quasi-masculine book. I think it'll look great. So as I was talking about um, meeting this lady in the Dollar Tree and her not knowing what a junk journal was, I remembered that I um, subscribed to a channel. Uh, she's fairly popular. Her name is uh, The Paper Outpost. And... I'm also, you know, a member of her newsletter, and she has great ideas. Her name is Pam, great lady, lives here in Florida, and, um, you know, whenever I get a chance, I watch her channel. But she had given me, um, well, all of us, it's, it's available for download, or um, if you were to subscribe to her newsletter, uh, you get a copy of this note so when I met that lady earlier today I wish I had a copy of this <laughs> to give her because she really did not understand the concept um, I mean she did but um, when you say junk it just kind of throws people for a loop so this right here is a note from the bookmaker um, it just basically explains what it is that you're giving to someone when you give someone a junk journal when someone purchases a junk journal from you and gives it to a friend their friend is like well what is this <laughs> what is this crazy thing <laughs> you've just given me so anyway this letter right here just says dear sir or madam you like paper and you like the look of this book but you're wondering what could it possibly be used for? Handmade journals, altered books, and junk journals are a source of fun and enjoyment for paper lovers, for traditional journalers and artists, for those who enjoy writing about anything. Use it like a notebook, a diary, a planner, for sketches, for those thoughts that pop into your head, a scrapbook, a place to keep receipts, long-term shopping lists, and inspiration. Keep safe your personal scraps and memories in its many secret flaps, pockets, tuck spaces. Fill every available space with your words, thoughts, and reminders. You're, you ca uh, cannot spoil a junk journal. You can only make it more beautiful by making it yours. Use the artwork, the graphics, the aged pages, and the decorations to inspire you. I mean, this is such a beautiful letter. Enjoy the feel of the different papers in your hands and textures and colors of the aged effects. The sounds of crinkled envelopes and the crispness of new paper and the smell of old. Older books and papers are sometimes used to make new ones. We are only helping them be loved and treasured again. And then there's like a definition of the word ephemera down here. Um, ephemera is what we all use to embellish our books. And um, I think if I, I, I think I can, um, I will keep a copy of this handy 
when I'm on my journeys and traveling and shopping and whatnot, just in case I run into another individual who is unaware of what junk journaling is. I was not planning to promote um, my channel when I met her, but her inquisitiveness made me realize that I probably should be out there promoting our channels and our craft. So, yeah. Anyway, back to this. This is looking pretty, pretty good. I like it a lot. This this inside cover has just given my um, entire cover a lot, lot more sturdiness. And, yeah. So, I think, you guys, I'm going to... Um, grab some of my the papers that I created here to go into the journal it's a little uh, uneven so I don't know if I want to cut any of them down to size let me just see if they fit without cutting oh yeah they more than fit and I like I like the disarray or the, the non-uniformity of um, of the pages at the edge here I think it looks pretty good so Yep, I'm just going to figure out how am I going to stitch these in. I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. And for the center piece right here, I'm just going to overlap it slightly. And then get my signatures stitched in. I think that'll be perfectly fine. All right. So I'm just going to give this some time to grab, but I'm also going to train it to fold right here on the spine crease. Okay. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and set up my signatures to go in here. Um, I did touch this with some glue, so... So these are just some signatures that I pre-made a long time ago and wrapped them in vellum and tissue paper or tracing paper and um, yep these look perfect right in here I think I want that one on the outside yep so that'll go, go great right there alright let me grab my um, I don't think I want to use the crocodile on, on this one. I think I'm just going to use my awl and big eye needle. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so this is just an all um, pokey tool or all or whatever they want you call it, AWL all. And here is one of my big eye darning needles, which will go through the spine of the book. And on the outside here is blue and white. Let me see. Yep. 
going to use some white uh, wax thread on this one to coordinate with the outside of the book. And of course the rule of thumb is three times the height of the book. One, two, three. Of course, if you want like a little dangle to hang down below or as a, um, you know, down here at the end of the book or at the top of the book, you want to give it just maybe a couple inches more. And we're doing two signatures, so I'm just going to uh, double that. Alright, we're going to wrap this up really quickly here, hopefully. So, I know that my spine is one and a half inches. To get the uh, center, you can use a ruler, okay? Um, sometimes I just eyeball it. And sometimes I use the centimeter side because centimeters tend to give you the closer um, marks for uh, centering. And I can see like my two ends are 16, so my two centers are 17 and 18. I would put one at 16 and a half and 18, right? 16 and a half and 18 and a half. Let's just double check. And these measurements are in centimeters, so. Let me grab a pencil. I never have a pencil like right readily available. This isn't even a pencil. This is a shading uh, charcoal type of pencil, but let's just see. 20, 15. So yeah, I would put one here at 16 and a half for sure. And my other one would be 18 and a half. Let me just make sure that the book is creasing properly where it needs to. Yeah. So yeah, 18 and a half. And I'm using a T-ruler, so I just butt this up against the edge here and of the book. And uh, know that my lines are straight for sure. So a rough estimate for two signatures would be 16 and a half and 18 and a half. And I just slide it all the way down to about an inch above the bottom and put two more little notations that it's gonna go here at 16 and a half and 18 and a half. You can barely see that because it's over the design. Oh, now my nose wants to run, awesome. I haven't had a runny nose in forever. 16 and a half and 18 and a half. Oh dear. And up here, I tend to bring this down a little bit more than an inch. So we'll put it about here. 18 and a half and 16 and a half. And you can draw a line. Just to make sure that your lines are straight, your 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 points are straight. But I'm just going to use my T ruler to measure them up, make sure that they're all in the same the same line. Yep. Right there. Okay. Oh sorry guys, my nose just started <laughs> just decided that it wants to run for whatever reason. Um all right, so from here, I am going to uh, I'm going to find the center of my signature and get those pages really tight down into the crease. Okay. 
and I'm just going to use the three dots that I made on the left on the right hand side to measure where this is going to go on the signature so this is just the way I do it there's probably I don't know half a dozen other ways to get this done but this is just the way I do mine and I just put a little not a little dot right on the signature corners just indicating that that's where I'm going to punch my holes for both the signature and the book spine And I'm going to start with the book. I'm going to use my pokey tool and a piece of foam, just a regular piece of packing foam. And I'm just going to pierce the spine of the book. And I'm going to do all three in a row. And I'm going to do my back signature first, and this is how I get it done. So I just flip my book over when I'm using the awl. If I'm using the Quapadol too, it's a whole nother process, but when I'm using the awl, I um, just flip my book over, get my pages lined up, grab a clip. And I can see already my my uh, tracing paper is giving me a problem. These things have been sitting and prepped for so long, dying to get into a sick into a journal, and finally the day has come, and the the tracing paper is just not lining up appropriately. And you don't have to have tracing paper. It's just one of my little signature things that I do um, uh, for my journals. It's just one of those little added embellishments that I like to, to put on there. And I think it's the it's the acetate that's causing the signature to just um, you know static cling to it and cause a problem. So here I'm just going to clip this here. I'll grab another clip for on this side. All my signature pages are in place, and then I will. Include the acetate. And I normally don't touch the uh, spine of the signature that much, but this time I had to, and I lost my line, so I have to remeasure it. So I can see that one's there. This one's there, and this one is there. Okay. Okay, so that went all the way through. Did that one and my last out there. Okay. So 
now I'm going to thread my needle. And wherever you start is wherever you're going to finish with this process. So I tend to start in the middle on the inside. Actually, I think I'm going to do it a little different today. I'm going to start in the middle on the outside. Okay. I'm going to tie these off in, on the outside. And then go through the middle here. Then go down to the bottom. And through the book. And then come up to the top. And through the book. And clean your needle because it has a bunch of glue on it now. So let's just see how much string we have left. Yep, plenty. So I'm going to go back through the middle. Make sure not to thread your thread or stitch your thread. I mean, um, it may be a little bit more difficult to avoid, but just try not to poke your thread when you're going back through. Just did. Okay. That was not too bad. Um, so now you just want to pull everything tight. So here we have a three hole pamphlet stitch. Now we just want to pull everything tight, even up our, our, our thread uh, this way. Get one on either side of the center thread. Okay, so now we have that, one on either side. Pull tight, but don't pull too tight that you rip the pages on the inside or the, um, the cover. And I tend to uh, tie it in a double knot or a box knot and then a little bow but I think for this one, I'm going to use these as spine dangles. Okay, so yeah. And now you just need to train your signature to open and close as it would. Okay. And that's one signature in the book, okay? And now we're gonna go to the second one. I may have to run um, some tape. I don't know if I have any clear uh, book binding tape on here on hand. But yeah, this right here where this page is connect, 
Um, I might have to double glue that. Let's see how the back is doing. Not too bad. Yeah, but I may have to find a way to double glue this down, but we'll work on that another time. I'm just wanting to get these signatures stitched in. Find the center. Okay. Clip them all together. I'm going to chuck my pages down. And line these up to mark them. I don't suppose using a gel pen is the best idea for that, but moving right along. And you want to you want to flip your book on the inside. So this is where this you want to flip your signatures. I mean to the to the outside. Um, so that you're going through all of these pages right here at the same time. right side up. Okay. I'm go through the center of my signature. Okay, so, um, sorry, yeah, you'll find that uh, once you've got this started, there's a lot of glue and adhesives that you have to go through in order to get to the, um, the, the stitching portion of this process, but it'll be okay. Everything will be okay. And if your needle gets too gooey, you can just use a, I just use a little wet wipe or dry wipe and some water, clean it off. 
during the process. Okay, and the last stitch goes through the middle here and back out the other side. The important thing is to make sure that you don't pierce a new hole. That's why we use a darning needle. It's not sharp enough to create a hole on its own without severe force. And uh, you don't want to poke your other thread that's already here. It's not the end of the world if you do. It just makes it a little bit difficult to tighten everything up which is this part right here. So I'm just pulling, my strings are fairly even. I could make it more even, but it doesn't really matter. I'm probably going to cut off about a quarter of an inch at the bottom anyway. So I'm pulling it tight, but not tearing. Don't want to tear the pages on the inside. So I'm just gonna tie this off in a box knot. And the box knot is basically right over left and pull tight and then left over right and pull tight. So this is what I have left for my spine dangle and where's my little tiny snips over here. I'm just going to cut these evenly. Okay. And yeah, that'll look great as a little spine dangle. Whoops. <laughs> Move my clips and then just train my pages to live in its permanent home. Okay. And that's it. Like Dollar Tree and chipboard and a little bit of Joann's because this paper just was so pretty. Um, so yeah, I just made a full on junk journal embellishing it and decorating it is personal preference and I'll probably do some of that in a future video or find some coordinating things to go in here but yeah guys this is it this is just making a junk journal from scratch or junk I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm gonna leave you right here and um, have a crafty day guys go do something wonderful and stay naturally curious I'll see you in the next one.